We originally thought that uh, addiction was more of a moral failure, that the weaklings of the world uh, uh, would be the ones who would succumb to the temptations of drugs and alcohol, and that has really changed to a much more scientific view on addiction. We just think that uh, addiction is a biopsychosocial illness, very much like uh, diabetes and hypertension and depression and schizophrenia. And uh, it's a chronic relapsing illness, very much like a number of other medical conditions that we now know how to identify and treat. If a person did not have a genetic load of uh, addiction, meaning that uh, their parents or grandparents did not suffer from addiction, if the person did not happen to live in a down and out drug infected neighborhood, and if the person was not psychologically burdened with depression and anxiety, there was nothing to fear. We could prescribe opioids freely and liberally, and we should not suffer from opiophobia, the fear of opioids. Just make sure that the patient does not have one of those very dangerous uh, predisposing conditions, and then you can prescribe, prescribe, prescribe. Highest dose, highest duration, highest frequency, nothing to fear. Don't suffer from opiophobia. That's what the mantra was when I was a medical student. When I was, went to medical school, that's what I was taught. And of course, we ended up with the opioid epidemic. They misled people. They uh, essentially told people that uh, uh, there are no side effects to these opioids, that uh, you are suffering from pain, you take our wonderful pills and you will emerge on the other side and you will be functional and beautiful and strong and all the wonderful things in life are going to come your way. Um, not the case. I'm not so familiar with the international literature on what is going on now, but I do know that the pharmaceutical industry in other countries is using exactly the same tricks that they used in the United States to now push for the opioids on the international scene. All of us have a system in our brains that uh, scans the world for things that are pleasurable, rewarding, salient, um, and this is things like food and sex and everyday pleasurable stuff. There are only very, very few molecules, about uh, 300 or so, that have this particular ability that to go exactly at the very same center in the brain, activate the system in a way similar to the natural agents of pleasure and reward, and hijack our mesolimbic system, our pleasure-reward pathways of the brain.